Welcome to Newton's Law of Cooling. Uh, this is a demonstration where we're going to try and illustrate one of the oldest laws in physics that Newton came up with probably about 400 years ago. And I want to caution you at the beginning that doing experiments that are thermal experiments, such as this one, are actually pretty hard. There's lots of things that can go wrong. One of the things we're most concerned about with this experiment is when we place the can into the ice water, it might generate some convection currents, and convection currents will be carrying the heat away in a different way than Newton's law of cooling, which is describing heat conduction. So we're going to do our best to make sure that that doesn't happen, and let me explain to you exactly how the experiment's going to work. What we have here is a computer that's collecting the data, and you can see there are two temperatures listed on the screen. One of them is a hot temperature in red, and one is a cold temperature in blue. The cold temperature is coming from this probe that is in a bucket of ice, and it's got ice water inside. And then the hot one is in this can, which has water that's at room temperature. So the difference between these two temperatures is on the order of about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And what we're going to be doing is we're simply going to immerse the can into the water, and we're going to watch the temperature in real time as it evolves on the screen. And from that, you'll be able to see a curve of temperature as a function of time. And then we're going to show you exactly how you can extract the data from that curve and fit it along the lines of Newton's law of cooling. So I'm going to have my colleague Chris uh, actually start the demonstration, and then we're going to just sit back and watch. All right. So now I'm going to drop the can of warmer water into the bucket of cold water. Now what you can see initially on this plot is there was some little disturbance right at the beginning. What we're hoping for is to watch this over a longer period of time and really see the Newton's law of cooling come in. Okay, so we're now finished with these curves. You might be surprised that the two curves didn't meet each other, and you might also be surprised that the water temperature didn't stay at zero degrees. After all, it has ice in it. Shouldn't the ice have melted and made it stay at zero degrees? Well, it takes time for that to happen, and what you actually expect when you take a hot object and a cold object and put it together is that the hot object will get colder and the cold object will get hotter and actually both would be described by Newton's law of cooling. So what we should be seeing are two exponential curves, one for the decrease of the temperature of the hot object and one for the increase in temperature of the cold object. Now exactly what would happen to this, we waited for a very long period of time so that we allowed all the ice to melt and we had enough ice in here, it would probably come all the way back down to zero degrees and both of them would be at that temperature. But that's a bit of a different time scale for the way that we wanted to look at Newton's law of cooling. And for Newton's law of cooling, we just need to analyze the curves over this range. So you're going to take a look at a close-up of this, and we're going to give you all the data to allow you to do that analysis next. <laughs> 